What's going on everybody? How's everybody doing? Thanks for tuning in. So, drawing a hummingbird today, as most of you guys saw, can see. So check out, this is the reference photo that I'm gonna be using today. Uh, I may or may not add the flowers. I don't know if I'm gonna really worry about the flowers. I'm just gonna focus on the bird, probably. But, um, what's going on, Philip? Glad to hear, man. Oh yeah, today's Thursday, huh? Yeah, you're getting off early. All right, cool, cool. Glad to hear. So I'm just gonna start uh, blocking some of this in. I just need to zoom in a little bit on my reference. There we go. Okay. And we'll try to draw this uh, silly hummingbird. All right, because uh, cause everybody knows I got some new pins the other day that I haven't tried out yet, and uh, would have been really great to like, you know, would have been really great to draw a tiger with the white, but now you guys, everybody picked a hummingbird, so. Thanks to thanks to all the peers here on YouTube, all of our fellow watchers were drawing a hummingbird instead of a tiger. I'm not upset or anything. You know? <laughs> uh, too detailed. Let's start out with simple shapes. Uh, yeah, but the ads help me make money. I gotta have the ads. It's only like 30 minutes, 30 minutes. It's only like 30 seconds of your life or like an, a minute, 10 seconds. I didn't pick this drawing. This was a poll. This was a poll. Everybody picked the hummingbird, man. I didn't have a choice. I'm blaming everybody else. <laughs> I'm blaming the nation. They picked the hummingbird. Now we're stuck with the hummingbird today. All right, let's try. It's challenging, so it's all good. I'll do the tiger next week anyway. So. <laughs> but I was interested to see what you guys would pick, and I was really surprised, actually. I was, I was for sure, I thought, man, they're gonna definitely pick a tiger. Tiger's way cooler than a hummingbird. I mean, hummingbirds are really cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. I really like hummingbirds. But as a drawing subject, come on guys, tiger would have been so much cooler on this paper. A tiger would have been epic. It would have been super epic. The white and the black stripes and then the tone of the paper. Be come on, man. It's just, guy's got no vision. How do you think I'm going to do this hummingbird? There's no white on this hummingbird. There's nothing. I'm going to have to do a white background. Uh... I nominated it. It's true. I did put up Hummingbird, but I had to have two choices, you know. And Hummingbird was on the list that you guys, the the listeners, the watchers gave me. So that's what I went with. I'm not too mad at it. I'm just upset that it's not a tiger. Maybe I should draw like a tiger. Do they have like tiger hummingbirds? That could be a cool thing. Maybe that'll be a new thing I start doing. Let's like try to merge like two animals and we'll just like try to figure out how I should draw it together, how to merge them. That would be a cool exercise to start doing. Just to make something different. Just try to merge two different animals. I mean, it's definitely been done before, but who cares? Like everything's been done before. But that would be interesting. I don't really know that I could even do it, but I would try. Bear, lion, eagle. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, oh, whew. all right. Well, this kind of looks like a hummingbird, I, I think. 
think, I think, um, hmm, I won't know till I put the wings in there, there's an eye. Something like that, yeah. Okay, there's a tiny spot of white next to its eye, so maybe that could be a white, the white pin. I'm just bummed out, man. I wanted to really test out the white pins a lot. Like I said, I'll do a white background on this. We'll really make the bird pop, because the bird's already kind of tan, so we'll just make that the tone of the paper. We'll make the bird the tone of the paper, and then go from there. Uh, let's see, where does its wing? Right here. Okay, go up. All right, kind of have to guess this part. Um, so the wing goes above the beak, so it's like way up here somewhere, somewhere out there, uh, but it does, okay, it goes out further than its tail as well, to like, so it's like right here, something like that, so we can guess, guesstimate that for now, it could go out a little further. Um, and then we gotta find, oh man, did I do, let's see, no, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem too far back, but that seems like an awfully big wing. No, we'll see. Um, I think it's more. How can you draw and talk at the same time? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, sometimes I can't do it, but it depends on what I'm drawing. And I've just done a lot of practice on these live streams, to be honest. That's how I started doing it. I just. The problem is remembering, remembering to read the chat. I can talk and draw at the same time for the most part. So this one's in motion back here. It's a little blurry. Try to figure that out. Looks pretty good, I think. Pretty good for something I didn't really want to draw today. Uh, I still feel like the wing is like too big. I don't know if the body's too long. Like it doesn't look like I made it too long. Maybe this is too far back. So the wing, this whole wing could probably move up. Cause I based the wing location on the foot location. So if the foot location's off, it looks like it's halfway. We'll see if that's true. It's definitely not true. Okay, so let's see if it's right there. Yeah. So <laughs> it needs to be way up here, actually. Surprisingly. It doesn't look like it though. But when I measure it, it makes more sense way up there. So now, gotta move this whole wing. And I should have, uh, should have redrawn it before I erased it, but it's okay. It's not too difficult of a shape. I can can handle that. Um, you think my bird is slimmer? Are you fat shaming the bird in the photograph? I can't believe you would do that. I'm trying to flatter the hummingbird, man. Got to make it look a little bit better, you know? <laughs> uh, okay. Here we go. I think this is a little bit better. This is going to look better. So let's make sure. Yeah, okay. So the front of that wing is like right there. The little foot comes out like this. Something like that. <clears throat> it's 
going on? Enrique, Enrique, Kashika, Joyce, Amanda, what's happening, everybody? Hannah, Stephanie, what's going on, everybody? Didn't really say what's up in the beginning. I just started going, but it's all good. How's everybody doing? that later. All right, I think we're looking pretty good. Kind of looks like a hummingbird. The eye looks a little weird because I drew that. There we go. Let's fix that up a little bit more. And the beak thing goes down like this and Something like that. <clears throat> I think the bird's length's a little longer. Blah, blah. Yeah, I think it looks good. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. It probably does need to be longer, but. Something like that or something. I don't know. Okay, cool. Let's see. Let's try line that. Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. All right. So this thing has a bunch of different colors and stuff, but uh, unfortunately, we're not going to see any of that or worry about any of that. We're just going to focus on shading it with the pin and uh, we'll get a nice some kind of either horizontal white background or maybe that maybe like some kind of diagonal white background maybe try something new today I've never really done diagonal I don't think but it would kind of be cool like some kind of diagonal or just vertical really make the bird pop I think uh, so that's what I'm gonna, that's my plan. That's what I'm planning on doing. So we got spots, head is all dark. Okay, well, uh, I think I'm pretty much ready to go with this one. No worries, Amanda, no worries. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. It's almost Friday, so I'm happy about that. Wow, that's cool, Hannah. You saw like a bunch of uh, hummingbirds in one spot. That's super cool. I see them from time to time around where I live, but only like you know, you'll see one going around a tree and then it'll hang around for a second or land and then it'll just take off really quickly. Gets bored. But I don't blame it. It's kind of boring around where I live. No, not much nature. Okay. Well, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, the way it is. Probably need to fix the foot just a little bit though. Um, so the location is good. It's just the foot was a little off. It's probably a little long. Too long. Too long. Okay. And this goes pretty much straight down. Just little claws or whatever those things are, talons.
Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm okay with this. Looks like a hummingbird to me. As far as I know. Um, although I feel like the back of it is a little too fat. I know you guys said it was too slim, but I think the back part is just too... Uh, So I think uh, back was just a little too fat there. I think that's a bit better. Uh, one second, folks. All right, let's get into the let's get into the ink. Let's just do this. Let's knock this thing out. All right, it's 15 minute sketch. That was pretty good. That one went pretty well, I think. To get it done in 15 minutes. out of this thing. Well, let's try a different pin. This one's getting old. So I'm going to put that one off to the side so that I know. Okay, this one's a little bit better. Much better, but a little bit better. I feel like I'm going to need some new black pens soon as well. Man, these things don't last very long. It's so annoying. I feel like there's probably plenty of ink, it's just the little nib gets ruined somehow. Hmm. Yeah, I got the new white pins, guys. Got the new white pins. Haven't even tried it yet. Haven't even tried it. I wanted to try it on the stream first time. So, we'll try it today. I'm going to do a white background. I was hoping to do, like, you know, white tiger or whatever, but the white face of a tiger. But I should have just chose to do a tiger and not did a pole. But, you know, I like, I like doing a pole sometimes if I have two choices or a few choices, letting you guys choose because pretty cool it's cool to do that and plus it lets me draw stuff that like a hummingbird that maybe I wouldn't have drawn for a while but since you guys chose it I was like well I guess I gotta do it I totally did the poll I was like there's no way they'll pick a hummingbird it's just no way like I thought it was I, I, I thought I was rigging the poll from the beginning you know oh a tiger versus a hummingbird like Come on, this is too easy. It's gonna be a tiger, no doubt. Like on the tone paper with the white and the black, like there's no way they're gonna, like tiger's so much cooler. And then first 10 minutes, Hummingbird was winning like by so much. I was like, oh my God, for real? Like what is happening? Why do, how do I always think, I, I always get it wrong a lot of the time. Like there's times where I'll do a really good painting, like one of my favorite paintings ever, I'll post it. And I'll be like, man, everybody, this is gonna get a lot of likes. Like, people are gonna like this painting because this is really good. Like, quality is really good. And then I post it, like, eh, few people like it. Like, not as many likes as I thought. And then I post a painting where I'm like, eh, it was an okay painting, not the greatest. And it gets so much love. Like, all these likes, people are like, wow, this is a really great painting, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's not even that good, though. Like, it's not. But that's the thing, man. People, I, I, I always get it wrong. Almost always, like 80% of the time, I I get that stuff wrong. But I think I like stuff 
different than other, you know, than my audience, you know. My audience likes it for one reason. Like for the emotion or the colors or the emotion or the feeling and I'm looking at it like, man, the edges are really nice, the quality is really good, like the composition's good. You know, I I think most people don't see that kind of stuff, at least, uh, you know, some people. Some people do, but... Maybe uh, many of the folks following me don't really look at the stuff for that reason because I'm seeing it as like through an artist's eyes rather than the viewer's eyes. So it's always hard to tell. You never know. So guys, keep me on my toes. Keep me drawing some, uh, you know, it's good to draw stuff that I don't really want to draw because then forces me to challenge myself a bit and work through the resistance of things I don't really want to draw or I'm not in the mood to do or something but I just do it anyway so it's good it's a good it's definitely a good exercise for sure but I'm just rambling anyway Art is subjective? Yeah. I mean, I think, right? Of course, absolutely. I mean, there's parts of it that aren't. I mean, that's the, that's the thing. Like, you could say it's not. Let me focus my camera so that I don't look like a noob. Um, I think parts of art are subjective and then other parts aren't. You know, I think when it comes to a certain kind of quality that you're going for, like if you want something to be hyper realistic or realistic, like there's certain characteristics like it, you just have to follow for it to look that way. Like there's these objective like characteristics or qualities or whatever. Like I, I don't feel like, I feel like, I mean, and they can be subjective to an extent, like yeah, it's mainly subjective, I think. Highly, highly subjective. Because it's all, it all deals with feeling, emotions, expression, and all that kind of stuff, you know, it's like music. Like, music is very subjective as well. Like, some people don't like this kind of music, some people like this music. Doesn't mean the other. Doesn't mean the music you don't like is bad, or that it's not made in a in a good, high quality fashion. It's just not something that you enjoy. And I think art could be the same kind of thing. Like it could be created really well, or like I see hyper realistic paintings and stuff or drawings, and I'm not really, I don't really like that kind of stuff because it's like I'd rather just take a photo if I'm going to do that. But I can appreciate the quality of it and like the the amount of time and effort. Like I, I understand like the, the work that went into doing that kind of stuff, but I appreciate it from an artistic point of view. But I don't like it as a something I would want to do or something I would want to own or anything like that. So I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, the next poll is going to be tiger or tiger. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, I don't understand why an artist would be motivated to create hyper-realistic art. It's like being a human photocopier. Why not just take a picture of your subject then? Yeah, I mean, that's exact. I mean, you just summed up exactly how I feel, basically, but... You know, maybe they're, uh, you know, I would do it, I would, for me personally, I would do it as a, as a, as an exercise to see like, okay, how realistic can I really get? But I, I wouldn't do it as the end, like the end piece. I wouldn't be like, oh, this is my piece of art. It looks exactly like this thing. Because I feel like it, it, you, you miss something there. You miss like, you miss a step that art usually goes through, which is like an interpretation. Like, a, you know, usually 
It's like me drawing these hummingbirds and stuff and like these animals. Like, yeah, I'm drawing from the photo. It looks kind of like the bird, but like, I'm not trying to draw it exactly the same. I'm interpreting like things about it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to simplify things in a way. And in a way, my stuff, I try to make, keep it really loose. You know, I just want strokes. I want it to just look like strokes up close, but then from far away, I want it to like, you know, make sense as a drawing or as a subject or whatever. But yeah, everybody's different, so I don't know why some people like that kind of art. It's just what they go for, I guess. Just a coincidence, or are some things just meant to be? Hmm. That's a good question. That's really the huge question, right? Is there coincidences ever? I think very rare, like for me personally, I don't know. I mean, obviously there's gotta be room for some kind of coincidences to happen in life, but who knows? Who really knows? <laughs> Getting deep on the live stream this evening, yeah. Getting deep, going deep. Okay. I'm trying to get deep into this drawing and I'm not getting anywhere. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to make it look like just a little bit of a little bit of movement up there. Cut and didn't do that too well on this one, but it just ends up looking furry rather than movement. See if I can simplify that a bit more. Yeah. Oh well. That's a tough one. That's a tough thing to do. Especially with pen and ink, trying to make something look like it's has motion blur or something, you know, like I'm not really sure how to how to show that. <clears throat> Uh, I don't think I'm going to draw the flowers. I'll just leave them out. You know, we'll see in the end, like, yeah, I'll just leave them out. I'm just, let's just draw a flying bird. I feel like the flowers would just be, it kind of overkill, kind of kill it, I think. Because I want to do like a white background, so it's going to be somewhat, abs you know, not abstract, but it's gonna have an abstract background. So I always feel like if I put too much of an environment in there, like normally like grass, like putting in grass or something, like if I'm drawing an animal in the grass, like it makes sense. But something like this, I don't know if like those flowers up there would really add much. Basically, I don't wanna draw the flowers. <laughs> there we go, that explained it pretty easily. I don't wanna draw the flowers. Just be honest. What's the bird's name? Uh, Birdie. <laughs> My cat's name is Kitty. The bird's name is Birdie. Um, it's the easiest way to name animals. Just call it what it is. Then you don't even have to ever try to remember its name or, you know, it's simple. Keep it simple, you know? <laughs> 
Uh, I'm terrible with like coming up with creative names. That's why I've called my cat Kitty for 15, almost 16 years. 15 and a half now. She's 15 and a half. Okay. Looking good, I guess. Looking pretty good, possibly. <laughs> Leonard. Everything's a Leonard. Unless you have multiples of the same pet. Ah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, what do you do then? What would I do if I had another cat? Oh, man. That's true. That's why you only have one. Of, of only one of you of everything it makes it it keeps you from being uh, you know getting too many you don't want to become a collector you know what I mean you just <laughs> you only need one how many do you really need don't be greedy <laughs> you gotta leave some for somebody for other people I don't really know what to do for this pattern. Just try to make it look furry a bit. Or feathery, not furry. But it does kind of look like fur in a way. It's very bizarre. But I know I want like its belly to be the tan of the paper. So I'm going to have a little bit of shading to do here. But we'll just try to replicate the texture a bit. Or I'll just try to do that, I guess. You guys are just watching. You guys are like watching paint dry. It's got to be boring. Okay, let's see. Some cross hatching. Don't really do that too much, but it seems necessary at this point, so. Doing a little bit of it. Doing a little bit of it. Okay. What's going on, Light Warrior? Thanks for tuning in. We're just chilling here, trying a hummingbird. Trying to draw a hummingbird. Looking pretty cool, I think. I'm getting there. I'm kind of jumping around a bit just because I'm just going with wherever I feel comfortable at the moment for replicating the texture or drawing or whatever. Just hopping around like a bunny rabbit. You know what I mean? Okay. It's got some cool spots on its throat so we'll try to try to replicate that there we go nice really cool pattern very interesting Getting some nice subtlety with this pin that's almost dead. Because so I can get some very light lines, luckily. 
So sometimes these dead pins are useful, so I've kept all the dead pins I have so far. I feel like they might come in handy if I need something very light or feathery looking or something. Who knows? Might use it one day. Yeah, the bird's eye looks pretty cool. Let me mess with it more. <laughs> um, what do you think of this bad weather going on? Oh yeah, the hurricanes and stuff in the south. Is that what you're talking about? It's pretty crazy stuff. And then in California we got all these fires. But finally today the uh, air quality is finally in the good range and not in the seriously hazardous, unhealthy, very unhealthy range. So that's good. And I can actually see a blue sky for once in a week. So that made me kind of happy today. Finally opened up the window today, got some somewhat fresh air, fresher than it's been. So glad I was able to do that because I usually open the window every day and just get some fresh air. Kitty likes sitting on the windowsill, looking out the window and stuff. And we haven't been able to have the window open because it's been so smoky. But today is finally getting better. Hopefully it stays that way. Hopefully these fires keep dying down. Just, just subtly working on some of the line work, just kind of thickening up some of it, making it a little more dynamic. Try, you know, trying to. Um, let's go on the back side of this bird now. Try to suggest some scale type feathers. Has some interesting, like feathery, furry looking scales or something. The way the feathers are, almost looks like a fish. It's really cool. So just trying to suggest some value there. But there's a lot of value going on in this one. A lot of different values. But I'm going to try to simplify. Kind of merge things together. We'll keep all this pretty simple. I got to remember to look at the bird as a whole rather than just small little parts of it. Make sure it all just works as a whole. Overall values. So I think the bird, this will really pop out once uh, I put that white background in. You'll really, it always happens. It gives more context to the bird and like the tan of the paper and everything. I think it'll be really cool. And there's actually some white on its tail, the tip of its tail. So that should be pretty cool. And I think there's a little bit of white right next to its eye. So this will actually be a pretty cool drawing. As much as I didn't want to do it and I was blaming you guys, like it's, it's, I was just kidding really, but. I do would like to try to draw a tiger and see how that comes out. But, uh, you know, hummingbird's not too bad. I was just more surprised than anything, I guess. With the pole, that's all. I think its wings need to be a little darker overall. So I'll try to just follow the form of the feathers here, get some some value in there. Um, I 
Wow, that's pretty cold in the Bay Area, Philip. I think it's like <laughs> where I'm at in East Sacramento area. It's 97, <laughs> it looks like. Yeah, it's in the 90, 99 and 100 this whole week, so pretty crazy. But that's about normal. It's about normal around here. Yeah, I'll probably do a tiger next week with pen and ink sometime. I don't know if it'll be next, but sometime next week, because tomorrow is a watercolor. I still have to figure out what I'm going to do tomorrow in watercolor. I've been doing a lot of little studies, so, you know, the car studies I did, did the figure studies. So, not sure what to do next. Whether I do just one more little study thing or do some kind of landscape or a study for a landscape or something. I'm not sure. You guys have any thoughts on what you might want to see tomorrow in watercolor? Speak now. Speak now or for or never never tell me. Oh yeah, the poll, the polls, uh, Sebastian. The polls are if you, if you have, if you happen to have a phone, if you have a uh, the YouTube app on your phone, the poll pops up a lot easier. But if you go to, if you just go to my, um, yeah, there's the link right there. It's under the community tab. Like if you go to like posts on YouTube and stuff. Um, for some reason, they make it a lot easier to find on your phone. Uh, on the desktop version, you actually have to go to my page. It doesn't really notify you when I create a poll or anything. And uh, it's, 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 I feel like it's a pretty big flaw for YouTube. Like, I feel like they need to have like a, they have a video subscriptions page, but why don't they have like a post for, a post page for like polls and everything like from your subscribers or posts or whatever. Instead, you have to like go to the person's action. Nobody goes to my actual page, you know, it's just, it's weird. It's like very rare. People only do that when they're subscribed once or they're looking for a certain video or something. But YouTube needs to just get their game up, son. Or they just need to hire me and tell them what they need to fix. <laughs> or take my suggestions or something. I can't be the only person that suggested that. They're too busy spending all their money on stupid stuff. I guess I can zoom this in for you guys. A bit more. Let's go really close. Can I go even closer? Ooh, I can. There we go. That's as close as I can get. How crazy is that? I can't even see it that close with my own eyes. But... Yeah, I was thinking of doing some watercolor architecture. I was thinking of doing that, finding a photo online of like a, a city street or something with some people and cars and stuff and just see what happens. Just kind of play around, have some fun. I don't really have many photos that I could use for that, so I'd have to find, um, I'd have to find one online, which is not a big deal, but I always, for the watercolors, I, I try to like use my own photos, but for those kind of subjects, I don't really have much. Yeah, the texture came out really well on this thing. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, definitely, I definitely got some cool texture uh, for this, for our birdie here, for you guys' bird. Doing this one for you guys. Being self, selfless today paint drawing this for you guys although I complained a little in the beginning but I was just joking just had to 
try to be funny, that's all. But I was being honest. I really thought, like, Tiger was going to win. That's why I was complaining, because like, I was so surprised. Like, but, yeah, it's all good. It's all good, of course. So I've been saving the best part for last, which is this white background, which is going to make this thing pop. Like, I have no doubt this thing's going to pop. There's some very little shadowing on its belly here, so... Luckily this pin's almost dead, so I can get very, very... You guys probably can't even see that, but... I can get very subtle lines here. It's almost like... Just barely any ink. Just getting some like more subtle values. Which is pretty cool. And there are some darker spots and stuff, so it's okay if I, some of the ink comes out a little bit more here and there. Because it kind of just works right with the texture of the bird. So, it's pretty good. I have more like a highlight spot there. That's what I was going for, trying to go for. Same thing up here on its head, on its throat. Just a little more value here. There we go, but there are some spots and stuff down here. It's a little bit darker. Maybe watercolor or tiger? Nah, I don't know about tomorrow. <laughs> no. I do want, I want to do that one day for sure, but I think I might draw it first. That's usually the best, uh, best route to take. Draw it first, get the idea, the values down, get the, get used to drawing it, you know. Kind of like what I did with that fox. I'll probably draw the tiger and then maybe watercolor it. That would be cool. I should probably start doing that with all the animals because I think the animal watercolors will probably start selling pretty well too. People like animals, right? Like water painting of animals. I mean, that fox sold pretty quickly. That was one of the first animals I've ever watercolored, and that thing sold like the next day. So, if I can do some good animal watercolors, then there we go. I think that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. So. Should we try, shall I try out this new white pen? See what we got. See if it's completely dried up already, if it works, if I got a crappy pen in the mail or. <laughs> yeah, black and white ink with the water, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like we're related, can't believe it. Uh... Yeah, this one came out really well. Do the ink and the drawing, and I want to buy a paint ink set. <laughs> All right. Hopefully I can do them well enough for you to want them. I'll do my best. We'll see what happens next week. All right, I feel pretty good about that. Uh, so what do I do with the white background here? I'm, I'm, do I do like a some kind of diagonal? But then it's like following the wings if I do that. Should I just do, I think vertical to go against the beak? Maybe like just around its head? White or something? Should I just do like a, should I draw like just a rectangular square shape? Make it completely different than what I, like, Hmm, so many choices, I'm not really sure where to go, what to do. I'm not sure where to fly, like this little hummingbird. Let's get rid of the pencil. Um. Hmm. Ah, like horizontal this way. 
That would be cool. Although you know they fly like all kinds of crazy ways. Thick outline. Uh, you mean I should thicken up the outline? I mean it's already pretty thick in some spots. I don't want to make it like cartoon like. I probably could like make it more dynamic in some areas, you know. But I don't want it to be like too thick everywhere. I'm not sure what you mean. I feel like variety is better, like having a variety of thick and thin. You know. Oh, white outline. Now I'm gonna do a white do a white background here. I'll show you. I don't know if you've seen my other ones, but white background. Maybe horizontal around its head. See, I'm afraid of it like it's conflicting with the beak if I do horizontal. That's what I'm afraid of. But yeah, see, I want to do white like this, like white background. Uh, okay, none of these have white backgrounds. Where's one with the white background? There we go, kind of. Wow, none of these have white background. That's hilarious. All right, well, I guess I haven't done a white background in a while. I think I'm gonna do vertical. I think I do vertical. Oh, okay, vertical around its head. Yeah, yeah. I think I think vertical, and then. Ugh, I don't know. I don't know. Vertical. I'm trying to just. If I do do vertical, I'm trying to figure out where, how far to go out. Maybe I do like a circular kind of make it fade. All right, let's do it. No worries. Uh, SFS Eagle. It's all good. I'm just starting on. First time ever using this new white pen. We'll see how these work compared to the other ones. We'll see how long they last as well. So, but I think I'm gonna just, oh look at that, it's not even writing. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was about to cry. Okay. Thanks, thanks uh, Designs by CAD Pro. Appreciate it. I think it came up pretty well so far, so. We'll see if this white pen can write. Oh my god, it's already not even... Whoa, it's definitely... Okay, it's definitely different. We're getting different kinds of strokes here, folks. Okay, I'm gonna have to get used to this. I'm gonna have to adapt a bit here. It doesn't want to write. What the f heck, dude? Ah... Oh. You're right, Nathan, that could have been cool. Do a circular hatch to match texture of the feathers. Too late now, I think, right? <laughs> uh, but if I did like a textured background, that could have been cool. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. I got this brand new white pen, it's not even writing. I've had it upside down for like three days. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's writing, it's definitely, Definitely bright. Definitely feels really smooth now that it's actually writing. The ink feels a little bit harder to control, like it's just spilling out ink. Because it's a uniball, it's kind of very inky. Definitely gonna have to get used to this pen. Strokes are kind of inconsistent, but but then they're not. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, we'll try to get used to it. It seems. Does it look any different than my other one? We'll have to compare it in a second. It looks brighter. I feel like it's brighter. Right? Like maybe the lines are thicker, it's brighter. It feels smooth, but it, it feels like I can't control it. It feels like I have less control. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, sometimes you want like less control. Um, 
but see sometimes I can't make it come out it takes a minute for it to start coming out so I think I just need to get used to it we'll see how long these last and how these work see the strokes keep getting broken I think because I'm, I'm drawing so quickly strokes I'm going so fast that the ink is breaking over the surface of the paper kind of like having its beak pop out of the white. Let's try to see if I can make that work. Let's see what it looks like. So I'm just adding these little like dots and like strokes for show that it's kind of like fading out, breaking up. Trying to anyway. Yeah, inconsistent flow. Um, I think it's because I, I draw the stroke so quickly. Um, but it's not bad. It, I mean, it doesn't look much different than other the other drawings that I've done. But it is... I mean, I like how, how white it is. And I like how it feels. It's very smooth. You know, it feels very smooth. You know, I'll use these for a while till they get crappy like the jelly rolls, but I'm I'm not sold yet on on which one. I mean, I do like the jelly rolls when they do work, so I think I just need a lot of them so that if one just starts crapping out, I have another one I can use, you know. Like, That's kind of cool, huh? Wow, it really pops, huh? Wow. Yeah, that white pen, man, that white pen, this is really bright white. So let's compare this. Make sure this is all dry. Yeah, we're not, it's not coming off at all. Doesn't seem. So let's compare that to when the jelly roll was good. So this is, we'll go to the very first sketch in the sketchbook. Pretty similar, huh? Pretty similar? Not much of a difference. I mean, the, this, it is a little bit lighter in some of these areas. Like most of the, if you look at, if you look at the strokes, they're a lot thinner, smaller, lighter. And then when you see this, they're over, the overall it's thicker, more bright. What do you guys think? Like this is definitely a drier type of stroke. Um, but I'm not like unhappy with either one of them actually. It's a very subtle difference. But um, yeah, this is pretty, it looks pretty cool. Sometimes it takes a minute for it to start flowing out. There we go. And if I if I can learn how to control that broken stroke, that would be cool because it's almost like a form of dry brushing with the pen, you know, like if I can figure out a certain speed to make it be broken so that I can make it look that way when I want it to that would be pretty cool 
So let me see what you guys think. Thicker and brighter on the new one. Yeah, it is. It is so bright. It is really bright. I told you guys. I was saying that last week. I've heard. I saw that these were much brighter. But uh, and one guy was like, "Oh, they're not as good." So like, yeah, okay, whatever. It's like I saw people online testing them. I saw the side by side difference. I knew it was brighter. Yeah, it definitely, definitely looks bright. So now all I gotta fix is some of the black lines here. Just kinda push the, the white into the background a bit. There is some white on the hummingbird as well, very little. But I think it might be important to add that as well. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Um, there is some like, there's like white on the eye. It's got like some highlights and stuff. Put those on. And then there's some white like behind his eye. Or to the side of his eye, not behind. That, ooh, look at that, that's cool. That's really cool. And then there's some white on his tail. I feel like, yeah, let's put the white on his tail because it kind of give like a little, little point of interest down there to kind of just make your eye bounce down there. But that's really white, whoa. Here we go. Wow, that's so cool. Wow, I'm really glad you guys picked the hummingbird. Look how cool that looks. You got the tail really balances out the rest of it. Wow. That looks super cool. You know, really the cool thing about now these jelly rolls, if, since they're almost dying, I can almost use these to just add like white things on here, but very little white. Like uh, just another value. Like sometimes there's little tiny bits of highlight that I want to add, but I don't want it to be super bright. So like that, even though it looks pretty white, but Trust me, it's not. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Let's see if I can do that somewhere else. Just add a little tiny, little bit, not, not a whole lot. There's just like some kind of reflection there or something. And a little tiny bit of highlight here. We'll give some texture to this light spot. But I don't want to overdo it. Probably already did overdo it, but yeah, just playing around. So how cool does that look? Yeah, a little too much there, but not bad, not bad. Yeah, this new white pen, man, this new white pen. I'm glad I tried these out, glad I found them. So we'll keep using them, we'll keep using them for sure. But yeah, this one, this one is definitely pretty cool. Um, definitely really cool. Yeah, and this one, it seems like this, I'm gonna have to test it, but I think this white pen can actually write on the black ink as well. That's what it looks like. Uh, the problem with these jelly rolls is they don't really write on over the black very well. They're very weak. So I'm gonna have to test that. Um, yeah, we'll test it in the future, I guess. We'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah, same person saying that we were crazy not picking the tiger. Of course, I had to do that, like, yeah. I had to do that. I knew it would be funny to say that, but, uh, yeah, it's true, man. This hummingbird came out really well. I'm actually happy. I'm happy with this one. I was, I'm not really surprised that it came out well. Once again, I thought something that I didn't, wasn't interested in drawing would come out crappy, but it didn't. Did I miss a question up there, guys? Uh, 
Looks more opaque. Yeah, it's definitely more opaque. Are you going to do drawings for Inktober? Um, I kind of do Inktober my whole life, or my whole, this whole year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'll still just be doing these drawings, so. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna stop the watercolor, so I'm not gonna like do every day Inktober. And actually the guy, the guy that came up with Inktober, the whole, I forgot his name, Jake something, Jake Parker or something. He's kind of under some heat right now, guys. If you guys follow Alfonso Dunn, who wrote a book. Yeah, there's a big controversy going on right now about book plagiarism with uh, this Inktober book coming out. And uh, he got called out for plagiarizing his book. So, yeah, I'm not really, uh, at this point, I'm not really a fan of Inktober. So, just saying. But yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just. I'll just keep doing what I do. You know, I'm not worried about uh, stuff like that. But this w this will fit into Inktober anyway, so which is cool. But I'm probably not gonna name them like Inktober or anything. We'll just keep it. Just keep pressing on, pen and ink. Boom. Yeah, there is some art drama actually, like the only art drama I've ever seen. Um, yeah, an art guy plagiarized his book. I mean, it looks super plagiarized. It's funny because it's only it's just talking about like you know, art concepts and like pen and ink concepts, but he totally just jacked it straight from this other guy's book. Like same exact kind of drawings, so similar. It's crazy. And then the stuff he was teaching, it's like his stuff he didn't even use in his own drawings. He didn't even use it himself. So like. It's clear he just like stole, he just straight up took it. But yeah, the Banksy thing was kind of drama too. That was kind of cool. How is my book coming along? Um, you know, it's going well. As far as I, I haven't heard anything about it in the, in the past week or two because I'm pretty much done with it right now. So they're kind of doing their thing with it um, in the process. So I'll hear about it in the next, you know, few weeks. But, uh, it's it's gonna be pretty cool, man. It's it's gonna be pretty cool. I'm really excited about it, and I think anybody, yeah, I can't really talk a whole lot about it, but um, it's gonna be really helpful for the majority of my channel. It's gonna be very very helpful, and I'm very excited to like for it to come out and to promote it and talk about it. And it's it's I tried to make it as useful as I could, and um, you know. It's, it's going to be cool. It's definitely going to be cool. Uh, somebody said, you are good at drawing. Do you draw from imagination too? Not really. Not really from imagination that much. Just not my thing. Um, I feel like I don't really have anything up here to to bring out. Um, I mean, I'm sure I do if I like actually thought about it. But yeah, I just I don't have a lot of practice with that. So... You know, I'm not 100% sure about drawing from my imagination. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate the support. Yeah, I mean, you know, soon, I mean, hopefully soon I'll be able to talk about when it's coming out. And, and I don't think it's going to be very expensive, um, you know, relatively. I don't know the exact price. It's going to be available on Amazon. So I'll be sure to have a link for you guys to purchase through. And that way I get some commission from the sales because uh, I'm don't. i not getting paid like per book sold. But if you guys purchase through my Amazon link, then that's a way for me to get some, uh, what do they call it? What do they call that kind of revenue? You know, commission revenue from each sale at no additional cost to you guys. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be paperback. I don't know if they'll have a digital version or not, to be honest. Um, I don't, th royalty, yeah, yeah, ro yeah, I'm not, 
well, I'm not getting a royalty because I'm not getting per sale, but if you get, if you buy it through my Amazon link, then I get like, an, it's a, I'm an associate for Amazon, so I get like 4% from every sale. <laughs> so for every $100 people buy through Amazon link, I get like four or five bucks. So it's not a whole lot. Like I'm not like making a living from this stuff at all, but every little bit helps. So I try to do all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I'll have a link for you guys and you just gotta be patient, but it, it's gonna it's gonna be useful for people that are interested in art and there could be a digital version, but I don't know that it would make a lot of sense. I'll just say that. I don't think it would make a lot of sense given what the book's about. But, um, what pins do you use? Um, I did get paid for my work, Philip. They definitely paid me, but I'm just getting paid like, you know, flat fee up front. I'm not getting paid per book sold. You know, I'm not like a, <laughs> a big writer or anything. So like they just paid me a fee up front and, uh, or, you know, for writing it, promoting it and stuff like that. And then they get all the money from the sales, but I get a little bit from the sales. So there's a link to the Micron pins that I use. So I use Micron 05 pins. That's kind of my favorite size. So I have a bunch of these, this size. Um, in the past, I have used different sizes like 03 and 08. Um, so I use those. And then the white pins I use, these are um, Jelly Roll 08. Here, I'll try to zoom in here. Um, so these are the old white pins that I used. So I use these sometimes, but the new ones I just got are these. And look at that, they got cool like Japanese writing on it. It's pretty cool. This is a Uniball Signo white pin. If you just type in Uniball white pin, this will come up. I bought like a three pack of these. Um, so those are the pens I use and the pencils I use are just like random pencils. This is an HB I've been using, but you can also use like a 2H, um, you know, 2B, a B. You can use all kinds of stuff like that. But, you know, I also have other kinds of pens. I have a brush pen. I don't use it too often, but you can get like really wide lines like that. You know, you can get thick brushy type lines, thin brushy lines. So this brush pen is pretty cool, but it's very black. It's very opaque. Um, so I, I don't use it too often. And then I also have, I also have uh, this big white marker. It says it's an artist pen uh, made by Faber-Castell, but it's more like a marker. But this will give you big thick white lines too for like background and stuff. It's pretty cool to use. I use it every once in a while, but it's also very opaque as well, so I don't use it that much. I kind of like this style, like thin lines, texture, and just making stuff pop like this. So, do you ever use Shade of Gray pen sets? Uh, I did have those in the past. I don't think I have them anymore. Um, if I do, I don't know where they would be right now. I did have them in the past and I used them. Let me see if I have, I, had, I used them in my sketchbook last year. Let me see if I can show you like a little bit of what I did. Yeah, here we go. These are just like thumbnails I was doing of like landscapes. So this is where I was using those gray, those gray shades of gray. I think I, I still do have those. I just don't know where they are. Um, here we go. Here's one of them. I just found one of them. So yeah, I still have these things, but I don't really use them too often. But yeah, I've done, I've just done like thumbnail sketches of like landscapes, trying to plan out the values very simply, uh, just simple value sketches. Um, I did this one. This was a painting that I ended up doing and it sold pretty sure. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't think I've used, I don't think I really use them much more than that, to be honest. At least not in this sketchbook. Yeah, here we go. Just more of like, 
thumbnails and stuff, just value thumbnails. But anyway, here's one of my favorite drawings I've done though. This was a study of a Bouguereau portrait, oil painting, but that's with uh, graphite and the white chalk pencil. So I don't do that stuff that often anymore. Try fountain pens? Yeah, I've thought about that. I've thought about getting some ink with a fountain pen. Every time I've gotten them though, they're always very scratchy on the paper and they, they always have to push hard to make the ink come out. I think I just get, I, I don't know. I have, I've, I've not been able to figure them out, uh, to be honest. Yeah, you remember that one, huh, Philip? The painting for the, the tree with the, like, pine trees with the light coming through the snow and everything? Yeah, that one's sold. <laughs> That's funny to hear, SFS Eagle. They said, I remember a few years ago I searched how to draw as a joke, and I found your sketch tutorial series, and I instantly became obsessed with art. The only problem is that it's hard to get some motivation. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's it's hard sometimes, you know. It's it's um sometimes you're not motivated, you know. Sometimes I'm not motivated, but it just depends, you know. Try to draw what you want to draw. Just do stuff you want to do. Otherwise, you really lose motivation. What's the one pin you deemed the best of the best? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't really have I haven't tried many pins to be honest, but Right now, I like the Micron 05s. I have tried. Uh, I did try these Prismacolor ones in the past, and they weren't much better or any better at all, so I just stick with these Microns. Um, and right now, I like this Uniball white pen, because look at what happened here. This one, I mean, you can get some really solid whites there. If I really wanted to like make it super white, I could really just fill it in and it'd be completely white, so yeah, I don't really have like a best best of the best kind of pin the dip pins do scratch the paper yeah, yeah, I don't like that I don't like that feeling I wish they were a lot smoother and just easier to use are you planning to do more of how-to video? it's really helpful yeah, I am I'm actually uh, uh, you know, I'm planning, I don't really want to mention it, but not many people watch these live streams anyway, but so I'm thinking of changing up my channel a bit, guys. Um, to be honest, you ever considered a fountain pen? Yeah, I just talked about that. Um, yeah, I just said I've tried them before, but they kind of like scratch the paper. I can't figure out how to use them the right way. I don't know if that's how they're supposed to be or whatever, but. Um, Yeah, I'm thinking about switching on my channel a little bit, and I kind of already started the process, but it's going to it's gonna be over the next few months, and I kind of wanted to, to start the beginning of next year. Um, oh, no, no worries, no worries, I understand. But um, it's just funny that you asked that question, and somebody asked it like two minutes ago, literally. So, yeah, it's just that they're kind of like scratchy on the paper, and I'm, I, I've had... I, have not had good experience with them, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm thinking of, of uh, I'm thinking of moving my Plain Air Adventures to their own channel, which I've already created, Plain Air Adventures. So I'm gonna re-upload all of them. I'm gonna keep the ones on my channel now, just keep everything. But I wanna move, cause nobody, like nobody on this channel is interested in the Plain Air Adventures. Very little people, very little amount of people. Thank you for the 3.99. Allah Wasfi, very greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Thanks for supporting the stream. Hope you enjoyed these videos. I'm gonna keep on keeping on, of course. I'm definitely planning more how-to videos. So, um, uh, so I'm thinking of turning Schaefer Art, this channel right now, into drawing and sketching only um, videos in the future, moving forward. So, and I think I'm, I'm I think uh, I want to start that like January, 
you know, early, like in January. So I want to move watercolor and the plain air stuff to another channel. So I'm moving the plain air adventures to another new channel. And, uh, you know, I might do a few more on this channel, but I want to promote the other channel so that people will migrate and move over and hopefully I'll find new people and stuff. But, um, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Philip. Yeah. They're going to be on their own channel. And I think I, I just need, I, I realized, I've realized I need my channels to be more niche. I need them to be more focused. Uh, when I look at a lot of other channels and stuff, like a lot of what everybody's doing today, not that I want to be like everybody else, but things are, you know, everybody's very focused. You know, somebody does only watercolor, their whole entire channel is watercolor, nothing else. So it's like, Uh, okay, Sebastian. I'm not sure what that is. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Um, let me write that down. Cause a fountain pen, cross writing pen. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Give me a second. Are fountain pens like the fancy, like expensive kind of pens, like a writing pen? I thought it was like a dip pen. I thought it was like those old fashioned like quill type of pens, you know what I'm talking about? Am I an, am I a moron? Am I thinking the the wrong thing? But Okay, cross fountain yeah, cross me write that down. Cross fountain pen Amazon. Yep. Definitely that's where I was gonna look, exactly. Cross fountain pen. Okay. I will search that up and see uh, see what see what I can get. Thanks again for the three ninety nine. Greatly appreciate that donation. Keeps me going here. Uh, helps me get these new new pins and stuff. So, all right. Well, I'm pretty much done with the drawing, but uh, it seems like we're getting a lot of a lot of questions today. So, <laughs> funny. Do you have any thoughts on Jake Parker Parker's latest scandal? Yeah, I just talked about that like fifteen minutes ago. It's funny you bring that up as well. <laughs> Yeah, I was just talking about that because somebody mentioned like, are you going to do drawings for Inktober? And then I kind of mentioned the whole Inktober like book plagiarism thing and how I'm not going to really do anything for Inktober. I'm just going to keep doing what I do. So. <laughs> My accent was thicker. I don't know about, well, I guess. I think I just sucked at talking back then. My brain was very slow. Yeah, no, no worries, no worries. I know it's late again, but yeah, yeah. I think it's 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 pretty sad, man. Because I watched, I, I skimmed through the Alfonso's Dunn, Alfonso Dunn's video, and I could just, I mean, it's bla it's it's really blatant plagiarism. Because he doesn't, and when you look at Jake Parker's work, he doesn't even use those techniques, man. He doesn't even use like the textured form and all the stuff. Like I looked at all of his Instagram works, like because I don't really follow Jake Parker or anything, but. When I look at his works, he didn't even use any of that stuff he was talking about. It's just, it's funny that he put that in his book, but he didn't even use it. Like, why won't you just write a book about how you do stuff? Like, that's what I just did. I just wrote a book about how I do stuff, you know? Like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny, man. It's really funny. Yeah, I can only assume he outsourced it, but then he must have gave it the go ahead. Yeah, but like he had to be involved in the whole process. It's not like he didn't, do you think he wasn't looking at any of the stuff? Like he's never seen it before. Like I, I don't, I'm not giving him the, <laughs> the benefit of the doubt for that. I mean, if you're putting out a book with your name on it, like you're probably going to be pretty involved in the process. I imagine, you know, like it's just silly to think. Yeah. Jake Paul, that's a different part of YouTube. Definitely. But, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I think I'm I think I'm split I think I'm I'm gonna split up some channels here. So I think Plain Air Adventures, they're gonna be on their own channel. I might have a I might have my own watercolor channel. 
apart from the planar adventures I i'm segmenting things up like that and this channel it's going to end up being drawing only and i'm not really sure what to do about these live streams like i like doing them every day maybe i'll just keep doing them but i'll have more only drawing videos on this channel like ones that i upload and create like how-to videos and stuff will only be drawing so that might that might happen like next like january so well really my my plane air ventures will be a vlog channel basically because i don't really have a life <laughs> i don't really do anything <laughs> interesting to actually vlog but the plane air ventures will be a vlog because then i'll have my travels in there as well when i actually travel again so okay peter draws i'll look him up thanks for the uh suggestion um sebastian Yeah, I actually already created the uh, Plain Air Adventures channel. So if you go to my, if you go to youtube.com slash art, like my channel page right now, if you click my little icon or whatever, um, you'll see on the side where it says featured channels, there's a Plain Air Adventure channel. I don't have all the, I'm re-uploading all the old videos, so I don't have all of them up yet, but... Um, Hi, can you speak to me? Joshua Yun? Yun? What's up? What's happening? What's going on, bro? Peter draws is excellent. All right, I'll definitely check him out. Can you draw a turtle? Yeah. Not right now, but I, I'll put it on my list. Finally, something other than a bird. So there we go, right there. See that turtle right on my list. So now I can get rid of hummingbird. So no more hummingbird. Because here it is. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks, Philip. I appreciate it. Well, I kind of don't want people to subscribe right now because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be putting out, <laughs> I'm gonna be uploading like three or four videos every day. But I hope it doesn't bother you. But they're all the old Plain Air Adventures. Um, you may not have seen them, some of them. But uh, oh, that's true. That's true. My sister has her turtle, so that's perfect. Yeah. No, I don't think I wrote it on this list, but it was on my other list. I already downloaded those photos, so yeah, I'll draw your turtle for sure. No doubt. How is my cat? She's doing well. She was out here earlier, but now she's sleeping again in my bedroom. But um, anyway, all right, folks, uh, any last minute questions before I get off here? Thanks again for the 399 donation. Once again, I totally forgot this whole episode to mention. You can check out my art on SchaeferFineArt.com. I got some drawings on there. Drawings just like the one you saw today for sale uh, from all the past live streams. A lot of stuff on there. And also the watercolors and gouache paintings for sale. And I also have a support page where you can support me. Uh, you can donate to me, PayPal, Venmo. You can add me as a friend on Venmo if you want. You can follow me on Patreon. I got some reference photos and stuff for you guys to use on there if you want to follow me on there and uh, also on Bandcamp, i have music that i make for my own videos on my own time that's all me all the production is me so check out my music if you want to hear that it's just some instrumentals and stuff a lot of different kinds of music and that's all at my website like i said right up here schaeferfineart.com check it out <clears throat> so <clears throat> yeah no problem glad you guys enjoy it hope everything's going well and uh i don't see any um i don't see any questions so i think we're gonna get out of here thanks for tuning in everybody uh i'll do a watercolor tomorrow but um i'm not sure what i'm gonna do but we'll figure it out maybe some kind of city-ish city-ish painting or something you know i don't know but anyway um anyway uh i'll see you guys on the next one take care of yourself